Hey everyone, it's Van. Welcome back to another podcast episode. This is part one of my conversation with Bethany, who is really the closest thing I have to a sister. She and I are very similar in many ways and different in some other ways, and we talk about some of those differences in this conversation. Just a quick thank you to all my friends who have watched or listened to this series. It means so much to me. You guys have no idea. So thank you, thank you times a million. And I hope you enjoy. Hi, Beth. Hi. Thanks so much for doing this. Of course. So we actually haven't caught up for a while. And I wanted to start us off with something that you told me a couple of weeks ago that you were having like a Zoom lunch and learn or not lunch and learn but like a teaching Mm -hmm. party amongst your friends oh Um, yeah tell me about that yeah okay it really wasn't about teaching but (laughs) (laughs) okay um so basically one of my friends um brenda she planned like um a group event for um everyone to come in with a presentation it could be about anything um so most people like made something funny um it wasn't yeah there was nothing like to teach anyone (laughs) I think I didn't go that route because I was gonna go that way and I was gonna be like the one person who's like let me show you how to do something (laughs) but um basically everyone had like five around five minutes to present and we just went around and like shared all of our presentations um so Jeff he actually made one about superheroes and he basically um made one uh, where he would pick your your superhero lookalike but then also personality wise like who fit you the best and then it was like kind of cool because it like dealt with everyone and everything so it was fun too I know his was really good actually he went first originally you were gonna do something about like your friends and Mm -hmm. like something about how each of them made it home which I think was super cute I know I (sighs) (laughs) I <laughs> when you and I were talking about this just briefly before yeah. and you were back when you thought it was more of like a teaching thing and that sort yeah. of world, um you were talking about how to like make friends and then that transitioned into how each one of your friends was really important to you and special mm-hmm. in your own way um, yeah. but I want to go back to kind of like your original idea of like making friends because like let's put your life in context a little bit Mm -hmm. like you've moved around a ton and I know as like third culture kids we've all moved around a lot you know within our friend group but I think in our kind of quote-unquote adult life you've moved around a good amount and Mm -hmm. it seems to me like you've had really great solid (laughs) friend groups in each place that you've moved to and you've managed to like create this community so I wanted to talk a little bit about like how you do that because clearly you're uh-huh. like the common denominator in this situation. No, <laughs> I don't know. I think honestly, I don't see myself as like the person who like makes like friendships so easily. Like I think I honestly think I just get lucky, like meeting people who know a lot of people that I'm like hello, <laughs> and then <laughs> it just forms. Yeah, I don't know. I think. In Seattle, I got lucky for sure because Jeff knew everyone already, and it definitely wasn't easy. Like, <laughs> I felt like so like outside for so long. Uh. Um, but I think the good thing was like the people that I found here made me so comfortable being around them. Like they tried really hard, but I'm just like, oh, like, are you sure I'm okay being here? Like, I have so many insecurities about that that I'm like. Ever, I'm like always scared like if they like me but I honestly don't know like what it is I think I think um I think the one thing I did do here in Seattle that I haven't I didn't really do as much when I was like back in Vancouver mm-hmm. was like I think I'd like force myself to meet new people because like I remember when I first got there you know I was like super sad and like all mm-hmm. that um, and then I just knew, like, my mom was like, just go to a small group in church. And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but I felt like that was the only way I could meet people. Because, mm-hmm. like, people keep talking about, like, oh, it's so hard to meet people after work and stuff. Yeah. So the easiest way for me to do it was just, like, 
put myself out there. It was so scary. But when I got there, like, I think the moment you put yourself out there, you're like, you surprise, like people surprise you that they're actually so welcoming and they want to get to know you, you know? And it's like kind of insane. Cause in your head, you're like, no, no, no. they think they're gonna think I'm weird, but they're all That's happy so to like, yeah. That's so like, true. I feel like you're really good at that. Like when there's like an outsider, you're always like super welcoming and you're always good at like talking to new people all the time. I think a lot of people are. And I think if you've been an outsider enough, it teaches mm -hmm. you how to do that for other people. Because mm -hmm. I think I've been blessed with people who have been really welcoming. And then those mm -hmm. people serve as an example for me when I'm in the mm -hmm. quote unquote in group to be like, yeah. okay, how do I make this person feel like how this other person made me feel like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 But sense. for you, like, I feel like you are really, you've been really successful, maybe not in like, I know some people who are really good at bringing whole like groups of people together, and then like forming a new group. Um, but I feel like you've joined these groups where sometimes that's even harder as like the one sole person coming into a group that already exists. Like yeah. how long did it take for you to feel a part of that group? And like, what are some of the things that you went through in that process yeah. of becoming a part of that group? Okay. Honestly, okay. So there's this weird thing. I have a theory for my, of myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> Every time I enter like a new community or a new group of people, um, <clears throat> whenever I feel like I'm not the new person anymore, that's when I'm comfortable with people, mm. which is really weird. But it always happens. Like at work, when I first had my first job, um, I was so uncomfortable for like, I don't know, like three months because I, I felt like I was just seen as like the new person and I don't like that feeling. Mm -hmm. And then when a new person came in, I felt, I all of a sudden felt like everyone was like making inside jokes with me because they're like, hey, remember when you first started? I was like, oh yeah, you know. <laughs> and then I'm like, all of a sudden, like, I don't see myself as the new girl that they're gonna like make fun of or something. But now there's a new girl, not to make fun of them, but like, <laughs> like someone new. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh blood, new hate, yeah. new person to hate. <laughs> But yeah, like, honestly, like, that's when I feel the most comfortable with people. I don't know why. It's, like, happened so many times. Like, even in work, like, when I'm not the new person anymore, like, I feel like I need to take care of the new person. And then I, like, help them, like, hey, like, just like what you said, like, make them feel better about being, like, even though they're, like, an outsider, make mm -hmm. them feel at home. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like that's my new goal in this group. And then I get more comfortable. Yeah. So yeah, like I remember like when Naomi first came, um, she was like, yeah, she was like brand new and like I've been with these people for like a year now. And then I was like, oh yeah, these are like my friends. And I was like, yeah, like I finally like, like understood like these are my friends, <laughs> like mm. here, let me introduce you to them. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know why it happens like that. It's yeah. weird. <laughs> I think it kind of helps you put it in perspective once you're if there's a new person, you suddenly feel like your role has shifted a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's I don't know. So yeah. do you feel like there's always been, if you look back at your experience, has there always been like new influx of people coming in to make you feel yeah. more? Yeah, yeah, all of the, the time. Group? Yeah, <laughs> it's always like, I. yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that how you feel? You don't feel like that at all? I don't know. I mean, so this is why I think our experience is really different because mm -hmm. it seems like you always have like a really solid group of friends that hang out all together to do any number of various activities. Whereas mm -hmm. for me in my life, like I have a lot of different friends that I'll do different activities with, mm -hmm. talk to about certain topics. Like I have friends that are really into like design. You're one of them. I mean, you and I talk about everything, but I have some friends that are like really specific to like design and like work, like my work world. Um, some friends that 
like I've met at parties, um, some other friends that like, I don't know, that like I meet through another, like another mutual friend and that's like another friend group. Mm-hmm. So I don't feel like I have like one group of people, whether that be like five to 10 to 12 people that I like interchange and do everything with. So Mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. And those groups tend to range from like three to five people at a time. I generally Mm -hmm. don't hang out with that many people at once unless it's like a party. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Wow, that is really different (laughs) because I do realize now that like, yeah, when I hang out with my friends, it's usually like, (laughs) yeah, Yeah. (laughs) which is really interesting. I don't think I've ever experienced like, having like different set of friends like that like I I I guess like yeah I feel like once I I have a community I stick to that community and I don't leave it Mm -hmm. like in Vancouver I was like dance community that's all I'm gonna immerse myself in and then I get out of it and then now it's like mostly church people so it's just church community and like yeah that's really interesting because sometimes I'm like I'm craving for like new new people (laughs) And I'm like, I wonder. Yeah, I think for me, the only time I've had that was really like in high school with our friend group. Mm -hmm. And I think ever since then, I like college really, at least USC really fostered that like, get into like different activities. Like I did dance. And then Mm -hmm. I also did like design stuff. But then Mm -hmm. even like my roommates and like close girlfriends were like another friend group that didn't know anybody else that I hung out Mm -hmm. with. And that kind of remains to this day. Like I still have all those different friend groups. And now I have like Matt's friends, which is like another subset of people that I hang out with Mm -hmm. and like their friends. So it's definitely all branched out. And I will say the Mm -hmm. only time that I really, not that I keep these people separate on purpose, but it's just hard to have everyone mixed together or like Mm. even a group of like 10 people mixed together Mm -hmm. from all these different places. It's just not something I've done before. But the only time I really, really bring everyone together is for my birthday. Oh yeah is always that it's always so much fun like I have so much fun on my birthday just bringing together everybody from like every part of my life like it's Mm -hmm. also with work now that we've like been working for a couple years and I have work friends that's like another subset of people so bringing those people people from college like those that I grew up with in San Francisco Mm -hmm. who I hadn't seen in like over a decade when we moved away um, like random people I've met at parties, like will all come together during my birthday. And it's just the most fun thing. <laughs> and for me, it's not even like, to be honest, a lot of these people don't even mix with each other during the uh-huh. birthday because oh, it makes like stick to their it makes sense like that mm-hmm. you wouldn't, you just don't know people. And like, I can mm-hmm. only be in one place at one time so I can't introduce everybody to everybody and like make sure yeah. everybody gets along mm-hmm. I don't want to force it either but it's just yeah. fun to see everybody that I know from like all these different mm-hmm. contexts of my life like in one physical location whoa yeah dude like I'm like the complete opposite of you like <laughs> yeah that's like my nightmare I don't know why like <laughs> when it comes to like I remember I, I had, like, my, like, mini birthday party, too, like, mm-hmm. in November, and it was basically, it's still all church people, but it was mixing my small group, which was, like, all, an all-girl group with, like, my friends, my main group of friends, mm-hmm. and I felt so awkward, like, I felt like I had to make sure everyone got introduced to each other, uh, make sure everyone was okay and meshing, like, it was my worst nightmare. Really? <laughs> Like, I, it was, I mean, I still had a lot of fun, but, like, it was just stressing me out that I was scared that people weren't going to mesh together. Mm -hmm. Or do you remember on my 18th birthday, too, in Shanghai? Like, it was church people, and then, like, like you guys, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was weird. I hated it so much, (laughs) and I was like, oh, like, I'd rather have separate parties for these groups of people, Mm because, I don't know. Yeah. It's cool that you're like that, though. Like, I wish I was like that. 
I think I used to feel that way, like, especially when we were in high school and for, like, your birthday. Mm -hmm. I I remember, and I understand the feeling. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I just, like, kind of got over it. And this is a very recent development. Uh Um, Like, I only started doing these birthday parties for, like, two years now. Like, our high school friend, Lynette, like, her and I do our birthday parties together. Mm -hmm. So that's that's another reason. Like, she has some of her friends that I don't know. um, And a lot of them have become my friends, too. But at first, they were complete strangers. Um, So it's, like, a whole 50% of the party is, like, people I don't know. And so naturally no one's gonna really, no one's gonna know each other yeah um, but I just kind of like let go of the fact that like people should mesh and like everybody should be best friends with each other because it's yeah. just impossible not that people don't mix because I think mm-hmm. naturally if they're friends with you they're gonna get along but mm-hmm. everyone's busy everyone has their lives like a lot of people aren't out here trying to make new best friends, right? Right, so yeah. So I think it's totally okay. And for for these birthday parties that I've had with, like, Lynette, mm-hmm. we have, like, we invite, like, 80 people at a time. And that's a lot of people. That's so a lot. It's not like we expect everybody to mix. It's just right. physically impossible. And yeah. so I've let go of the fact of, like, everybody should be friends and I should be like mixing around and making sure everyone's having a good time. Like Mm -hmm. I just make sure I'm having a good time. And I have a good time. Like I think it's very selfish because I know a lot of people come and they see me for like two seconds and I'm like, hi, thank you so much for coming. And then I like move on. But yeah, it's my birthday. It's okay. We'll schedule another time to hang out one on one and like have a really heart to heart conversation. But just for yeah. this, like as long as you show up, I'm happy. Right. No, that makes complete sense though. Like, man, like when you're talking about that stuff and you're like, I just don't care anymore. Like as long as it's me that's having fun. I mean, it is your birthday, so yeah. And then it just made me think that um, I like want to please people so much and like, oh my gosh, like I need to get rid of that because it's like happens too often and then I get so insecure about it and I'm like oh my god are people okay do they like me so like maybe I should do this next time and it's just tiring oh yeah. but yeah I need to <laughs> learn from you I feel like <laughs> just no, enjoy I my birthday <laughs> I definitely still struggle with that yeah but I feel like you're not as like not that you don't care about people, but, like, it doesn't bother <laughs> you. You know what I mean? Like, like a good balance. So. I don't know. Maybe I do a better job of, like, keeping up the image that I don't care that much. And I, I would argue that a lot of people who we think, like, have it on lock just do a good job of that. For me, mm-hmm. I think it's just been throughout the years, like, maybe the last three or four years, like Mm -hmm. constantly reminding myself of like it's fine like no one really cares about like we're all in our heads caring about what Mm -hmm. other people think about us when really no one cares about us at all Mm -hmm. I think we may have had this conversation before but yeah like the realization for me a couple years ago was like if I think about like we're all we're all really concerned about our own reputations like what people think about you and what all of that stuff but if you think about it like how much thought do you give to somebody else's reputation yeah probably not much so really yeah. no one cares about you so yeah. that for me was like so liberating and it's like okay well mm-hmm. like no one no one really cares so i don't have to i don't have to overthink my actions too much like as long as I have like good intentions yeah whatever small slip-ups will probably just like fade away and no one's gonna remember that's true do you just like remind yourself that every time like like how do you feel better (laughs) every time I if there's a specific instance where like I said something dumb 
like I made a lame joke or something yeah. and I'm like oh god that was embarrassing <laughs> like yeah. everyone's gonna remember this like really lame <laughs> joke and they're gonna think I'm lame I'm not funny like I'm not one of the cool kids like I'm yeah. so not confident x y and mm-hmm. z like the, the list goes on right and then I'm like okay <laughs> actually like how many people are gonna remember this like come Mm -hmm. tomorrow like are people actually gonna think back to this lame joke that I made probably Mm -hmm. not like the conversations already moved on they probably already (laughs) forgot it really doesn't matter (laughs) no for sure what if it's like something bigger though like I'm thinking like oh like what if um at work or something like maybe you said something too harsh or like I guess like I don't know. You, do you know what I'm saying? It depends. So, like, with with work, or not with work, but, like, with being harsh, I have a different approach of being, like, of, like, making myself feel better for it. And mm. this can be, like, a little controversial, because, okay, like, I think both of us have had reputations of being, like, kind of quiet, shy, yeah. well, not very assertive. Uh And over the years, I think both of us have, like, grown out of that to a certain extent, not 100%, right? And so whenever I find myself being really assertive, aggressive, or, like, harsh, to to use your words, I'm like, you know what? This software of being quiet, shy, and docile is still in here for the most part. Like, I've done my best to grow out of it. But as much as I try to push, like, most of the time, I'm still not going to come across as aggressive. So as much (laughs) aggression as I can give, that's great, (laughs) you know? (laughs) It's, like, nowhere near as other people who are, Nowhere near (laughs) as aggressive as somebody who's naturally been aggressive their whole life. Like, I've already had 20-plus years of non-aggressiveness ingrained into my body. I'm not going to be like aggressive all of a sudden so yeah, if I can do more of that I'm like yeah good, good job. <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow that makes sense yeah because there's times where like I feel like I've just been kind of short with people mm-hmm. at work and then I'm like quick to apologize I'm like I'm just so sorry for what I said and they're like what are you talking about I'm like yeah. can't you remember like I was mean like <laughs> yeah. and then I'm like wow people don't remember but it's in my head for sure like I yeah guess. That's the thing, like, we think that we're being so aggressive or being too Mm -hmm. harsh because we're not used to that tone of voice or, like, those sounds coming out of our mouths, and we're like, oh, what just happened there? But really, other people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I didn't even notice the thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, like, in high school, I just, because everyone told me, like, oh, you're so shy, you're so quiet, I'm like all right, I guess that's me. Like, you really put that on you, like, as your identity, and, like, you're automatically ever like, oh, yeah, like, I can't change out of this. This is just mm-hmm. me, which has been so bad because it's made me, like, for work or, like, just even, like, if I've been put into, like, leadership positions, like, it's made me feel like, oh, like, I'm not going to be a good leader because I can't do this. I can't be loud or, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just so, I didn't realize how much, like, high school really affects your life in the future and how you have to, like, overcome these things. For sure. Like, like I'm, I feel like you've grown a lot in, since high school, but I knew you were, like, because I know we hung out a lot, but I remember, like, I was always, like, a little, I was, like, a lot more shy than you, and then I remember always thinking, like, wow, Ben, like, really got it together. Like, she, like, knows what she's doing. Like, she... I don't even think you were that shy, to be honest. I think maybe some of my growth happened during high school. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the first phase. Because, like, I mean, you and I have known each other for a long time, but we really started to become Mm -hmm. friends in high school. And, Mm -hmm. like, elementary and middle school, I was so quiet. And if you hear, like, I had this conversation with my brother maybe a couple months ago or maybe a year ago. Mm And he was like, yeah, when we were kids, like, I legit thought you were mute. And this was my brother who I lived with. Like, that's how quiet I was. 
the mm-hmm. like he just he okay he didn't really think that because he would hear me talk sometimes but I was so yeah. quiet and like even at home like my parents couldn't hear me speak because I was that quiet Whoa. so I think in high school like that helped kickstart the process mm. of like speaking up a little bit more and then after that was like phase phase two I guess Mm -hmm. of like growing up a little bit but I don't know like I still think I was relatively shy in high school Mm, I thought you like you were taking on roles that were like because I remember you were in activities council yeah and I thought I was like oh wow that's pretty cool and then like I don't know you were always in a lot of activities and a lot of different extracurriculars too I feel like I think having my brother leave like high school Mm -hmm. was a big part of that because I always juxtaposed my personality to his and like growing up he was always really popular and like really like gregarious and whatnot and then in contrast I was like shy and quiet and then once he left I was like well now there's nothing to contrast my personality so I could just do whatever yeah Um, Uh Not that I should have waited until he left, but for me, I guess it was kind of, like, liberating to not have that shadow over me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it was, like, the first epiphany (laughs) of, like, if I don't want to be like this forever, I better Uh start now in this, like, doing more things. Man, like, for some reason, I just remember thinking, like, I remember, like, we were super good friends, and like it definitely like supported you and stuff with like everything but it just made me think about like just toxic relationships in high school for some reason Mm -hmm. and like there's some people who like really bring you down because you're trying new things and like Mm -hmm. I remember like since you were like you know trying to grow out of like you know trying to be not being shy anymore like Mm -hmm. like this person Mm -hmm. (laughs) I feel like would like tear us tear people down if they didn't like if they were not being the same person as they remember them to be mm-hmm. yeah. you, know, you know what I'm saying yeah and, I know what you're saying and it's kind of because I remember she or he <laughs> like <laughs> sucked me into that and like I'll be like oh yeah that is weird but when I like go back home and think about it, I'm like wow that's like not cool like why would I think that way about like someone like trying to be better like bettering themselves uh-huh, <laughs> like what's uh-huh. wrong with that yeah Anyways, I just remembered that, and I'm like, wow, like, such toxic things happen in high school. You totally read my mind. That's actually the other thing, the only other thing I have on the docket of what I wanted to talk about was, like, toxic relationships or friendships. So we don't have to, like, name names or anything, but, like, what were some of the things that you felt were toxic? Oh, 